Good afternoon, traders. Uh, Joseph here from ACAP. Welcome to this week's wrap up, uh, trade zone uh, wrap up. So, uh, it was another eventful week, uh, last like last week, and um, we it was more from a data point of view, so and policy point of view. So we the CPI sort of kicked it off uh, with the in the US, and uh, that didn't give us too many surprises. Um, it was as expected. Mostly the uh, the month on month for the CPI was slightly higher than expected. It really was the Fed that really uh, rocked the week uh, the day after. Now, the rates were on, were on hold as expected, so that wasn't the real um, the real crust of it. Um, the real the real key word was some of the comments from um, Fed Chair Powell. Now, um, basically, they've opened the door for the possibility well, of uh, two rate cuts next year. Um, there was some a little bit of mixed re uh, rhetoric in some of the comments, but the general consensus was uh, the Fed's done with cut it with uh, ra raising rates aggressively, uh, and the policy they're looking forward to a policy shift, and there is a possibility that we could see rate uh, cuts next year. So obviously we can see the carnage that ensued onto the dollar, and it didn't stop yesterday either. With um, it really started to ramp up after the CPI, and then we just saw it. Yeah, it just continued throughout the week. So we'll see what happens today. But the damage has already been done. Uh, we did do a report on this. It was a nice low high pattern. We did had a bit of a breakdown of um, of what we saw in this price. I think the key worry for the dollar, um, you know, obviously sellers, including anyone calling it short, felt lucky in some of the comments that were coming out, and that includes myself. But for for me, what we could see here was a real stall. Uh, there was a real issue at this level here, and um, buyers were just not getting anywhere. Uh, it was as if there was a bit of a message there that um, something was going on, and regardless of how many times we saw uh, buyers try to push, uh, they were rejected flat out every time. And then we saw, obviously, the uh, CPI data, and then bang, we had the uh, the post after the FOMC. Um, it was a very um, strong move down, and it's it's now leading the dollar into, into areas that we haven't seen for a fair while now. We're going all the way back to um, uh, August this year before it really made that really nice run up. So I think now with this policy shift, um, if we don't see anything really catastrophic, uh, that's going to cause traders to run back to the dollar in terms of flight to safety. Uh, this could be now, you know, a new, well, a new shift, and maybe we're going to see a, a continuation lower. Um, we we remember the peak we saw previously. Uh, now, you know, will we see this continue to turn into a, a longer term uh, downtrend, and will we see a new move back down to break 100 and get back into the 99 area? So I think that will be, I think, a bit of a key at that 100. You know, it does it break below 100 again. Now, on the flip side of this, um, we saw some pretty really cool moves this week. Uh, obviously. Um, we didn't focus on, but there were some really nice looking continuations here. There's still, uh, this, the Aussie probably wasn't the best of the three. Um, the Euro and the Pound are a little bit cleaner. You can see that bar just here, a nice high break and then a continuation up to test this resistance. Pound was a similar story as well. Even though we did see holds uh, in the, in the uh, UK and uh, EU rates, um, there wasn't too much... Um, too many surprises in the statements, and it really, regardless, it was more just about anti-dollar and uh, trade, you know, a move back into risk with um, the safe haven being sold. So, regardless of the comments, and I think the only way that could have been some really big shifts was there was a massive surprise in the rates. But I don't think anyone was really expecting them to raise or, uh, you know, obviously not drop rates. So, um, some of the comments we we did see come out from the two central banks was. Uh, they still believe they have work to be done that can be um, in form holdings, so they're obviously going to keep an eye on the situation and just continue to hold and uh, monitor as things continue. And um, so I think the markets will continue to watch that. But I think at the moment, this week at least, it's been really mainly about the USD and how that's affected uh, the other markets, especially risk markets, including the euro, the pound, and the Aussie. So the Aussie got back up to um, you know well above 67, so it hasn't been there for a fair while going back to this period here and even with um so employment data for australia came out a bit mixed as well job creation was a bit str was stronger than expected but unemployment rose slightly so that was a little bit mixed but um the rba is done for this year so we'll have to wait till next year to uh to see what their next move is but the prob probability i think is a uh, for more holds and um, we'll see what happens there. Um, oil was another mover this week. Um, it had it continued its fight back, and we'll just zoom in a little bit. 
So I started this a couple of days ago. It had that failed low into this sort of slash the demand and support area, and we saw a nice move out of there. We still see a bit of um, you know traction issues here up at 71, 75. We'll see what if um, buyers can get back up to retest that 72 point, but 72 as well looks like resistance. So I think while 72 remains in play, uh, it's a bit of a wait and see. Uh, it has, has made a bit of a value snap back, and then we'll see if it does have some legs and if it can keep running. Uh, there's a few things going on, um, you know, the underlying, um, just with demand and other a couple of other issues as well. So, and also, will we hear from OPEC soon in terms of um, its valuation? So, I think definitely when it dropped down to this point at 67, it's quite low, and um, yeah, so keep an eye on oil, but yeah, it does need to break that 72 point. Gold and some of the other metals, um, palladium absolutely flew, and we'll have a look at that in a moment. But gold, um, obviously, as you'd expect with the dollar getting absolutely crunched, it bounced back quite nicely. We saw a move back up. Still plenty of ready selling at 2038. It looks like a bit of a fair value area right now. Uh, there's a little bit of selling today. Uh, it had a nice move back up above that area up to 2047, but it was quickly chopped down. So we really want to see if gold can break and hold above that 2037 to 2040 area. I think if it can close above 2040, that's a, a pretty good statement from buyers, but it does continue to have a lot of opposition just in this area here. And um, some of the other markets, um, so the US 30 and the German 30, for instance, at record highs. So it's quite amazing. You're thinking just not too long ago, really, just a matter of weeks, uh, we were back down at 32, and now we're back up at 37, making new highs. So uh, it just shows you how quickly things can change um, and how dramatic um, you know, just a shift in policy can be and how fast this market has gone up. So it's in nearly um, crypto-like in a lot of ways, this rally. It's just gone virtually just straight up and we've seen a lovely you know nearly 15 percent added uh in a matter of weeks um the german 30 as well it also touched new records yesterday so we can, it didn't close at them but we can see that touch there and um i think got a, a little bit affected by the rates um message yesterday so we saw also um some other really strong moves so uh, obviously the nasdaq as well had a really strong move the uh, spx 500 as well had very strong moves so if you were you know sort of had long-term um you know holds on these they really start to come into uh into the fray at the moment and um, we also saw some other markets uh, well it didn't do as well so the jpn 225 for instance is having a strong day today as the yen comes off but so we saw a, uh, a stronger yen during this week. So we can see um, if we do zoom in these um, three sessions here. And um, yeah, the yen was definitely uh, pushing some weight around this week, um, despite the dollar and uh, risk markets uh, rising with um, some of that new, you know, some of the influences that were coming out. But the JPY was definitely holding its own throughout the week. Uh, we have seen that, you know, change today. Um, while we are seeing some, you know, some gains uh, against the yen, we are seeing some slight, well, a bit of, not too much action really. It's quite quiet in terms of um, gains against uh, the dollar. The dollar seeing a small fight back at the moment, but I'm not sure if we'll see that hold. We'll just have to wait and see later in the session. And um, yeah, the dollar yen as well. So after um, a couple of uh, very nasty moves lower, we are seeing a tiny bit of support coming in a previous level area of demand and um, a bit of a foul low there as well. So keep an eye on this level and above. So it's 141.60 really, just moving up to 141.82. Crypto wise um, this week, sorry, we're just gonna to touch on Palladium. So Palladium had an amazing move yesterday. You can just see that here is well over, um, so it, it was put on 15% yesterday. So. Just having a look at it from a little bit more of a longer term here, obviously you can see that really long drawn out downtrend, but there is something just to have a bit of a look at now and we can see a really big break of trend and there is also some volume there supporting it as well. So we will continue to have a look at Palladium, see if it does make a move lower and then form a nice higher low and if it does move up again and break that previous high, then stay, maybe staying to tell us that we do have a you know a new uh, short term uptrend you know on our hands. So we'll continue to watch palladium and see how it goes. Some of the other um, precious metals, obviously um, platinum, very strong, broke above uh, that range this week, and um, silver as well has had a few, you know, obviously a few strong days. But it was after that very heavy selling we saw uh, previously after last week's you know surge, and um, obviously we've touched on gold as well. But looking at cryptos, so cryptos had a little bit more of an interesting week. It's gotten um, 
lot more volatile. We had a very big uh, drop this week. It was you know some some of the markets were down five to you know that five to ten percent point. Bitcoin, for instance, on this day I think it was around seven to eight percent. It fell so. See a nice a big decline there, you know, close to seven percent. Had a fight back, it's a bit of a stall at the moment. Other markets, though, have been continuing to push. Uh, Doge is um, being raised as well, it's been having a nice fight back after that decline. And um, ADA as well, it put in new highs for this year just yesterday. Uh, it is stalling a little bit at this stage, but yeah, it's one of the few that did put in new weekly highs. Ethereum as well looked a bit weak yesterday, but it definitely uh, fought back quite nicely. We saw a bit of a decline coming in, look like a lower high after that decline. We saw the market re re recover quite nicely, it's put in a new weekly high this week, but it's still well below. Uh, those highs we saw last week but overall um, things still look to be continuing on their way upwards and um, you know higher highs higher lows higher high and then and so on so we'll continue to maintain our view from um, a bullish standpoint over, um, over those at the moment now there is one coin it's a, a, a bit of a I won't say it's a joke, but it's connected to Solana. But the word, the reference of the word, uh, definitely locally here in Australia has a very different meaning. Uh, it definitely would make most Australians laugh when they heard uh, the, someone mentioned the word boink. Um, so boink, bonk, sorry, bonk coin uh, is connected to Solana. It's been seeing some ridiculous um, moves. So I think in the upwards of the 50% area kind of area. So why I did find that amusing is just to that reference of the word bonk coin and um, if you are Australian I'm sure you'll understand why that's uh, a little bit funny so wrapping sort of wrapping it up we're gonna just touch on some of the news that's coming out uh, later today um, we have basically uh, the flash services and manufacturing PMI coming out from France Germany uh, the EU uh, Great Britain and uh, the US. We also have the Empire State Manufacturing Index uh, to round out the week. And just moving on to next week as uh, we really do head towards uh, Christmas and um, you know the real business end of the year in terms of holiday time. So we have the some of the key things coming out next week is meeting minutes coming out from the uh, RBA. Uh, we have um, the, J, the J Bank of Japan's uh, rate decision so looking for on hold but really it's the policy statement that everyone's going to be really watching uh, Canadian CPI and um, any other key ones um, to come out so US final GDP advanced GDP is usually the most important one out of those and but final GDP will be one to uh, keep an eye on retail sales coming out from the UK and um, this really that's about it and then um, yeah some Canadian GDP and uh, consumer sentiment coming out from the US. So nice and slower, really, to uh, start ending the week uh, into, into Christmas. Saturday is going to be the 23rd. So Sunday and uh, Monday will really kick off that holiday uh, holiday time. And um, there will be a break in these reports for those um, public holidays. So um, we will we'll wish you a um, very festive uh festive season on uh, Monday when we uh, start to wrap up some um, of the reports for us this uh, this time of year as well. So definitely keep um, an eye on the dollar th this evening as we head towards the end of the week and uh, some of that flush data as well to see if we get any surprises there for the euro and uh, for uh, the Great Britain pound. But otherwise it's been a very, you know, another eventful and exciting week and um, just to cap off, um, you know, follow up from last week. So again, thank you very much uh, for your time for watching today's update. Have a fantastic weekend. We wish you all the best with your trading. And as like always, if you have any questions or if you'd like to know anything further, feel free to uh, send us an email or a comment on the YouTube video. And um, otherwise, yeah, good trading and bye for now.